I wrote a book all about Notion, and I've been speaking with some of the contributors to that book, and today I spoke with August Bradley, someone that has used Notion to do various things using his PPV system, and let's see what he has to say about Notion. Getting on to the first question then, uh, this could be a very broad question. In the book, uh, you are referenced as the PPV person, pillars, pipelines, and vaults. So how do you use Notion? Okay, so PPV, Pillars, Pipelines, and Vaults, is the system I've developed and that I teach. It's a comprehensive life operating system. So I use Notion in a vast range of ways. I manage my whole life with it. It's not the only software app I use, of course, but it's the backbone. It's the, the operating system. And then there are lots of satellite pieces that orbit around it. But I do, I massively leverage Notion. And I do that because it's uniquely capable of being massively leveraged. Uh, to me, Notion is a development platform where you can build your own SaaS app, which is remarkable. I mean, this is a new generation of app. That's why I went so fully into it because it is so expansive in what it can do. So I use it to run my actions and I use it to run my knowledge management. Those are the two big components. And then sort of a subcomponent is habits and identity sculpting, which is something that I do extensively as well. So I guess those would be the three categories, but those are very, very broad categories. And with the action part, let's start with that. That's perhaps the most involved. That is identifying what I value most in life, what brings light, meaning to me. That's a process. I have notion pages and systems that I use to dig into that and to revisit that on a regular basis and to remind myself and systematically bring myself back to that periodically because we change over time. And then I take those high level, that high level self-awareness and channel that down into my life aspirations. Given that, given what I value most in life, what do I want to actually achieve in life? What are my highest level aspirations? And then I channel that down to actionable goals, like goals that are measurable, trackable, you know, we can, you can know whether you've accomplished them or not. And then we break those down into either habits and routines that advance those goals or projects that advance those goals. And this is across my business life. This is across my personal life. It's really across everything. And then of course, projects, we break down into tasks and then tasks, we flow into a very focused, very streamlined view of what I need to do today, hour by hour. So we literally have our hour by hour actions mapped to my highest level aspirations. And that's something I never had before implementing this kind of system. I would do goals, life aspirations, goals for the year. I'd write them down. I'd put them in a drawer or I'd put them in Evernote. And then if I was lucky, I'd see them six to 12 months later. And I'd be like, oh yeah, right. I remember that. That's nowhere near where I am now. So I would just drift away from them. That's natural. We all do it. Even if you take the time to write them down, which most people don't. So this system very tangibly connects my day-to-day -day hourly actions with my highest level aspirations in life. So that's the action side. Knowledge management, something that you know very well. That is where we capture the, the flood of information coming in. We curate what matters most to us. We put it into the system so that we have access to it. But in most cases, once again, we forget about what we captured. And when I did this in Evernote, when I've done this in other systems, I just lost track of it. The unique thing about Notion and what I've massively tried to leverage in the PPV system is resurfacing in context. So once you capture the information, and you shouldn't capture everything, but you, you do a curated capture. Once you capture it, it resurfaces in context. So if I'm working on a project, I have a view of everything related to that project, including all the media I've captured, all the notes I've entered, my own thoughts, any distillation of information, all resurfaces in that project. If I'm working on a client, I have a page for each client. Everything related to that client, including all of the media, no, knowledge, thoughts, ideas, all is resurfacing in that dashboard for that client. Same thing for each piece of content. Every aspect of my life has an element, a dashboard in Notion, and every part of the knowledge management system and process will resurface in that context, which is something that never happened on any other system. And then habits and routines for designing how we spend our days and our hours, what we want to do consistently. So we get that compounding effect. This notion system lets me, it sort of, it puts guardrails and keeps me on track for those things. It makes it very obvious when I'm off track. And then it gives me a little bit of an incentive through this tracking and re the reward of seeing the consistency visually. It brings me back, back on track. So that's quite a bit. I mean, that's those, each of those is a broad category, but together it's so massively valuable 
and I talk a lot about systems thinking. This is the systems thinking approach that each component has value in and of itself. But when you combine them, there is an exponential increase in the value where each part fuels the other part because they're interconnected and informing each other. All right. Okay. I think that's a good segue actually to the next question, which was what is your processes around task lists and calendar? So you've just explored uh, you using Google Calendar. Is that a, a backend thing that you schedule things on or do you use another app with Google Calendar or Notion, API integrations? Could you explore that a bit? Sure. Um, I Let me start with the end there. I have used no, uh, AP, Notion API integrations. I've stopped using it. It's just... It, 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 we, it, first of all, you can set it up. I have a, a YouTube video on this and it explains how to set it up. It's a bit clumsy. It takes three different zaps. You have to be on a paid plan, which I am already. So it doesn't matter to me, but for a lot of people, that's an issue. And so you can set it up so that anything you add or change in your Google calendar will be updated in Notion, which is great. Now it does not work the other way. You cannot update Notion, have it updated in the calendar. So you just have to have the workflow that all calendar modifications will be done in the calendar app, whether it's Google app, Google Calendar or an app that's synced with it. And so I was doing that. It works, uh, but it's a bit clumsy and periodically it has issues. <laughs> so I've, I've actually just stopped doing that. It just wasn't worth the, the effort, though it does work for long periods of time and then you have to tweak. So it depends on what your priorities are. But so now I'm not using the API for that at all. There is this announcement that Notion is going to roll out some kind of in, uh, native integration with Google Calendar. It's a little unclear exactly what it's going to do, but I'm hopeful that that's going to give us true two-way sync. The way Todoist and Google Calendar have sync. Like, that's great. That's what we need. Um, and so I'm hopeful that's coming. Regardless, I am not using the API for that anymore, though you can largely do it. So I'm jumping back and forth. I'm Sometimes I go into the Google Calendar app directly in the browser. I used to do that even six months ago, I, that was my primary way of doing it. I've now since started using a team email software that has calendar built in and it's synced with Google calendar and it's called front. It's fantastic, but it's a team thing. Like you would never get this for yourself, but it's really good for team coordination, team discussions and chat threads in between emails, assigning responses to different people. We have a lot of customer service, cha you know, email channels and uh, chat bots on our, our chat, you know, customer service chat on our websites and inside our program dashboard. So all of this comes into one place. So this is something that a small company would use, not an individual, but because it has a really nice calendar interface in it, at this point, I'm using that, but it's essentially just synced with Google Calendar. Right, I th I th again, I think that's another great segue to the next question, which is how do you stay on track daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, etc. I know in your series on YouTube, you've done a, a video on your review and I, I, I'm familiar with your dashboards of reviews and tracking of all of the things that you have inside of Notion. So can you just walk us through how that, how that works on a, on a section basis? Yeah, so these are the actions and processes daily, what I just discussed. And then we have our review cycles. So we're gonna have, I have weekly reviews, monthly reviews, quarterly reviews. Now that sounds like a lot, but keep in mind that the quarterly review actually reduces the load on the monthly review twice every year. So basically you're just offloading things from the monthly review that otherwise would be in the monthly review. So the quarterly review actually simplifies the monthly review. So the weekly review, I'm re primarily reviewing of my active projects and we're trying to minimize the number of active projects. So a lot of us have all these projects, but we make hardly any progress month after month after month. So the, the objective here is to have a very small number of projects that we're actually committing ourselves to and making meaningful progress on regularly. And then when those are done, then we activate a replacement for those. And uh, so you have a small number that you're moving consistently on instead of a large number that you're barely moving at all on. And in this process of reviewing weekly of the ones that are set to active, what tasks need to be done to advance that? Now, any active project must at all times have at least one active task assigned to it. Again, we're assigning due dates, DO dates. So there's a specific day you intend to do something. An active task is a date set to active and has a DO due date. Um, you can, you will, in the project, you'll queue up future tasks but only one or two or three will be active. It doesn't make sense to have eight active. You can only do one at a time. So queue up the next one, and then you have a sequence of next up, future one, future two, future three. So 
it's very clearly prioritizing what needs to be done to accomplish this project. But given any week, you're going to ensure that any active project has at least one, if not two or three active tasks assigned to it. Now, those due dates can be a month out. They don't have to be this week. But if it's assigned a due date and it's active, the task, then it will automatically roll into your focus action zone dashboard at some point and it will advance. So that, that, that keeps me moving. So weekly, I'm making sure that every project has at least one active task, sometimes two or three. And then I'm reflecting on how I've done in terms of living up to my habit commitment, what, which habits and routines am I successfully implementing and which am I not? And then I can have a conversation with myself. What do I have to tweak to solve the ones that I'm not doing? Uh, and then there's some basic cleanup, you know, cleaning up folders and stuff. So you have a clean workspace and things are easy and quick to access and implement with. Then monthly, we're going to be reviewing whether we have the right projects set to active. Now, at any time in the month, you can, if you finish a project, you can jump in there and adjust it and add new active projects. But at a very minimum, we're going to reconsider monthly which projects should be the active projects. And then quarterly, we're going to review which of my goals, the measurable trackable goals, should be the active ones. So there's a process for at each tier of the hierarchy of you know, our tasks, projects, goals, which ones are set to active making sure that very few are set to active, but the ones that are set to active are we're making meaningful progress as we go. It's better to finish a few, move on to the next one, than to just spread yourself so thin, nothing progresses. Yeah, oh, I, I love that. That, that again, moves us on to the next question. I feel like you've read the questions already. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does extended cognition mean to you? Now, before you answer, just for clarification, extended cognition is using other either technology, whether that's tech or paper or something outside of your mind to help with cognition. Traditionally, that's seen as uh, building a second brain from Tiago Forte, but not necessarily just that. So what does extended cognition mean to you? And how do you use it? Yeah, the knowledge management is just one of many examples. I mean, extended cognition is basically a description more than a title or category, right? You're extending the power of the mind, the capability of the mind. And, you know, it, it's, it summons this concept of artificial intelligence and how the future will have these, will be plugged in with, with these vast, smart thinking machines. But you know, just like robots, we think of robots as these futuristic things. And we forget that dishwashers are robots. ATMs and elevators are literally robots. That's what they are. And so instead of just projecting the extreme hypothetical in the future, let's realize pen and paper is extended cognition, right? The human mind by itself is dramatically enhanced when you combine it with pen and paper. I mean, think of what you can do in terms of mathematics, just by adding pen and paper. And then what a calculator adds on top of that. And then what a computer and spreadsheet adds on top of that. So let's not miss the mundane. I mean, we're deep into the extended cognition realm and we have been for really centuries. So in fact, the, the nature of human endeavor just drives us towards it inevitably. It's just the natural, you know, as we try to enhance our physical power with tools and levers and hammers, we're trying to enhance our cognitive ability similarly with tools, simple as paper. It could even be as simple as using your fingers to count is extending cognition. So let's just put it in context. Steve Jobs famously said that he wants the computer to be a bicycle for the mind, right? Because a bicycle radically enhances the leverage of what you can do physically in terms of transportation from one point to another. He wanted the computer to do the same thing for the mind. That is explicitly what you're talking about here with extended cognition. So it happens at all levels. Now, clearly, Notion and Obsidian and Rome and all these tools and Evernote, all of these extend cognition. Um, so it's just an inevitable, natural process. I think what becomes more interesting is how what we can do in terms of designing our own systems, the element that we have the most control over, given the available tools, to maximize that. And that's why I've developed PPV and why I think Notion is is kind of special in that it gives you the most freedom to design your own system. Uh, but we're surrounded by extended cognition and it's a beautiful thing and let's take advantage of it. 
So yeah, so moving on to the the last question, which is around knowledge management, which you you sort of, uh, leaned leaned on a little bit. I'm curious because you used to use Rome Research and you moved back to Notion. I I assume listening to what you've said on social media and answer to previous question, the reason you moved back to Notion is because you wanted the knowledge in your system. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, uh, I mean to be fair, I was never as deep into Rome as I was into Notion. So I do know the tool Notion better than Rome or Obsidian or the other tools, though I am interested in these other tools and they're fascinating and they're so cool. Uh, so I love the innovation happening beyond Notion. Um, and so that's all great. Uh, I, the biggest problem was to have a separate system and all of these are early stage and none of them have good APIs, if any API at all. So they can't communicate with each other. So I needed to bridge the gap and it was just too much work. Um, I love the link-based network thought. Um, you can do it in a lesser way in Notion to some extent, but it's it's so much more elegant in Rome and in LogSec and in Obsidian. Um, so I I played with it to see what how I could do it, but it was just too much maintenance to maintain two separate systems. So that's why I went back to Notion. And again, the ability to resurface in context. So you can resurface in context in those knowledge management apps within the knowledge topics that you're tracking, but you can't resurface in terms of the projects that you're doing, the clients you're serving, the content you're creating, any other context, any dashboards that are on focusing on a slice of your life, which I call pillars and in pillars, pipelines and vaults. So I've got all these windows and dashboards that need to pull in all the relevant information and actions happening in that slice of my life. And once you have especially something as important as knowledge management in a separate component, essentially a siloed component, it's not informing the core system and can't resurface in that context. So it's a trade-off. There are circumstances for sure where losing that is worth the benefit to somebody, uh, not to me, but to other people who prioritize other things that those tools do particularly well. But it's a big trade-off if the rest of your life is in one system and Otherwise, is all connected and you know system systemically informing each other. So it wasn't worth it for me, given how much I value that connectivity. But I can see the the appeal of it for sure. Yeah. So something I was listening to your building a second brain summit presentation, which was really good, by the way. I believe it's going to be up on the Tiago Forte's channel at some point soon. Um, it, there's a link. It is available uh, unlisted. It's uh, on my homepage on YouTube, it links to it. It's an unlisted posting at this point. I mean, as all of them are. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I've got notes on them already because I watched them all live. <laughs> uh, and something that, that came up in my mind when I was listening to the talk and, and your answer just now is the, the ratio of action versus knowledge. Because I feel like some people are much more knowledge focused rather than actions. Their, their time is spent inside thought, inside theories and concepts, myself included, <laughs> um, rather than the actions and projects. And I feel Notion leans heavily towards actions and projects rather than knowledge and the tools for thought more the other way. Would you agree or disagree? Um, I would I, I agree with parts and disagree with parts. So I agree <laughs> that some people lean more towards knowledge um, and don't need as elaborate an action management system. Uh, and some people need both. Everybody needs knowledge. Although most people, I mean, I'm running a business, but I'm also, my work is heavily based on thought. So I'm deep into both. I just need, I need the combination. I would, the disagreement is that I don't think that Notion leans away from knowledge. I think Notion is phenomenally good at knowledge management. Um, and I think these other tools, Obsidian being the currently most popular is phenomenally good at knowledge management. I agree that Notion is much better at action management and project and task management than any of those because those are note taking apps. Like they're specifically for that tool. Whereas again, Notion is a development platform to build your own. So there are pros and cons to Notion as a knowledge management tool, but there are many pros. And one of the biggest is the interconnectivity with the rest, but it also has very, I mean, it has all the structure you want, but also all the fluid dynamic interrelations that you want as well. You can still do endless linking within a Notion database, but then you have a structure so you can find it if you're if you if you're having trouble finding it with search because you can't remember the right keywords, uh, you know what I mean. So, um, but I also think the others are very good at knowledge management. I certainly give them full credit for that. But I do think they're not that great at action management. So, um, 
a couple of different caveats, but if someone's <laughs> entirely, if their world is based on knowledge and thinking, then they have fewer requirements for the platform and they can go to a specialized tool just for that. But there's no specialized tool at everything except kind of notion because it's a development platform, <laughs> not a tool with a specific objective. So you can build your own tool. That's what's unique about it. Um, but you can build a phenomenal knowledge management tool. We have a in PPV, we have a vault system, which is the entire knowledge management system. And it's exceptional because you can, you can capture, you can distill, and then better than anything else, you can resurface in context because the rest of your context is under the same umbrella. So to me, that makes it the winner uh, for my needs. But I have a lot of moving parts in my life. So some people don't need as much and that's okay, right? So if you just need knowledge management, there's a tool just for that. And it'll get, you'll, you'll get started faster on a tool built with a specific application in mind. It definitely takes more time to start up on a development platform. <laughs> that's why you know, it's, there are systems like mine that get you started, but then you obviously wanna customize for your own needs. Right. So uh, obviously your system is always developing and all of the information that's coming out about tools and stuff is always evolving. I will leave a link in the description to your YouTube channel. Is there anything else you want to add before we uh, end the conversation? No, just, just note that so the YouTube channel is sort of the do-it-yourself version of my system. It's now expanding beyond the system into the psychology and human aspect. So part of the system is the notion system and part of it is the human behaviors around it. So we're now moving more and more into the human behaviors, but the, the core of the system, the notion system is there and that's sort of the do it yourself approach. And then the course is the faster, more hands-on with a community and direct support from me and my team. So there are two approaches to implement that. If you're curious, that's at yearzero.io. And uh, I'm happy to answer questions and engage with anyone uh, primarily on Twitter where I'm at August Bradley.